What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Today I am doing some upgrades to my connection between my server and my computer. Now, the idea here, when I originally did my network upgrades with this one, um, was to link four connections together and get them to work with extra speed. Like instead of a one, big, a one gigabit connection, the idea was to have four gigabits and then have that connected to uh, my PC here. And I actually only have two of them connected here because I decided not to install the second NIC that I bought that I put in this that had the four ports because I found out that the, it was an unsupported feature um, with that NIC. Um, that was not allowing me to combine the bandwidth on all of these. So pretty much that was kind of a waste on this. Uh, all it did was give it some uh, balancing or some uh, backup. So if one of these went down, which I actually did have one go down on me, which was kind of weird, I uh, just unplugged it, unplugged it back in, it came back up. But either way, I didn't notice it until later on just because it had backups, it had three other backups. So kind of pointless right now, except for having a backup. I'm still in need of a direct connection between my main PC and my, my um, Plex Media server, which also hosts other files for me. So it's like a NAS Plex Media server kind of all in one. So as you can see, I have, let's see, uh, 11 drives in here. I actually have another drive in here. When I take this apart, I gotta figure out why this is not working. Um, I probably got a cable or something not plugged in right, or I don't know. But I'm getting this filled up and that's good. However, I definitely need more speed between this computer and my main computer. So, so other than that, this has been a pretty good switch for me. Uh, it does have an issue where after about an hour of being online, the web GUI goes offline. So that is stupid because every time I wanna use this, I have to reboot this to allow it to show back up again. So it's pretty irritating. Um, but it is what it is. Once I get it configured, I just leave it running and it doesn't do anything bad that I have to really get in there and do anything with. So it's it's gonna be good for now. I don't really, I don't really um, see me buying or wasting any money on another one until I actually need one. So, and the upgrades for today are going to be two of these. Now, I've decided to go the route that I've seen on YouTube many times. I think I've also seen it on Linus's channel. I could be wrong. He, he might have actually did a four port gigabit, so maybe I'm wrong on that one. But essentially what I want to do is take this. This is a 10 gigabit card. It's a used, I think it's an HP um, server card. Now this is going to give me the SPF connection or SFP. SPF, SFP, it's one of those two. It's like SFP or S, SP, I'm gonna go with SFP. So it's gonna give me um, one connection, 10 gigabit speed. And I have two of them. And I'm gonna put one in here, obviously, and then one in here, obviously. That's how you connect two of them. You have them both in one in each one. So then I bought a SFP plus, or SPF plus, an SFP plus plug and Okay, I'm not taking them off now. But anyways, I bought this. This is a direct uh, direct connect cable. So it's meant for connecting two computers directly to each other. Um, it's not terribly long. I looked, I really didn't find a lot of long cables. And if I did find a longer cable, it was really expensive. So I'm actually new to this whole uh, type of connection. So literally the first one I've ever held in my hand. So, you know, kind of ignorant on this. Oh, shit. That was close. Okay, so I'm kind of ignorant on the whole situation, but either way, this is supposed to plug in one here, one there, and give me a 10 gigabit connection. And then, once I get everything installed and hooked up, I can go in and I can configure uh, not only my PC here or the server here, but I can also configure this to where anytime they need to talk to each other, they will use the dedicated uh, highway that I give to them that's 10 gigabits, which I would love to have, you know, a full 10 gigabit setup, but realistically I have absolutely no need for it because there's not a single other device in my house that has or can use a 10 gigabit connection or even if it could, would benefit from it. So this is all I need is a connection from this 
to this and that's it in the future when I add and fill this out more possibly I'll need more but for right now this is all I need also in my last video everyone told me how stupid it was to install this in the middle of the uh, server rack and after reading into it I agree however this thing is so sturdy I mean I'm pulling on it putting a lot of weight on it just to get it to tilt so this thing isn't gonna fall over anytime soon should I put it at the bottom yeah sure did I not do that and still okay with it yeah pretty much and because I don't want to take this thing out I've just decided to try to make a lot of noise. I just decided to just go ahead and do it while it's still in the rack. This is the definition of lazy. But it's Sunday and I'm pretty lazy today. All right, so it looks like this cable right here is the culprit for the non-working drive. And yeah, I mean, it should have power. Everything should be good. This goes to uh, one of the, uh, the ports on my uh, addition card or my SATA port addition card. But I think, I hope that maybe this cable is just shitty because reasons, I don't know. Unless that's just a really terrible card and it only supports two ports at a time, which would be pretty stupid because it's a four port card. But, I don't know, we'll find out. But either way, I'm gonna replace it with a different cable, kind of a newer cable, and then hopefully I should solve the problems. But, we'll see. Okay, so I got the new NIC installed. Uh, unfortunately, this is just not working and the light's not coming on when I plug in a hard drive. So I'm gonna have to work, work, mess with that later. I don't know if this hard drive is dead because this is actually not really like a, a regular red drive. It's just like an old Western Digital 500 gig that I was trying to use for some cold storage and I was testing it out. I don't really use it for anything else or really rely on it for anything because I got enough hard drives now, but anyways, I'm gonna mess with that later. It's not really high priority because at the moment, I only have enough drives to fill all the rest of them. Until I get another drive to put in here and actually wanna use it, I won't have to mess with that. So, but I'm pretty close. If I get one more drive, I need to, need to mess with that some more. Anyways, so I got the NIC installed and it did not pick up the driver initially. So I ran the, the Windows scan driver thing manually took a while and then for some reason through the remote connection everything lost connection uh, it wouldn't boot up so or it wouldn't connect anymore so I'm like what the heck so I ran my super long DVI cable over to one of my monitors and then uh, try to use the keyboard over there and pretty much it wasn't showing up or wasn't registering anything so I had a hard reboot it which sucked I didn't really know what was wrong but I just did a hard reboot it came back up everything was fine after that so kind of weird don't know what that was freak me out for a second and I don't know why this is blinking I'm not doing anything why are you blinking are you telling me something I need to know what is it what is it boy what's wrong why are you blinking tell me tell me now anyways now it's time to take this apart or take it down take it apart I just shut it down um, so I'm going to install it now Hmm, it's really dark in here. I don't know if this is gonna show up very well on camera. It should though. Maybe I can adjust these settings. Turn up the, the gain, make it grainy, but... Yeah, there you go. Now I just have to figure out where I'm going to install it. All right, looks like I'm gonna install it right here at the bottom. That for some reason I already have an open space. Oh, okay, that's where I had my my SATA card in that I took out and put in the server. So, perfect. I'll just install the network card in there. 
Wow, that was super tough. Very exciting stuff. I know you guys are uh, are blown away right now. Don't deny it. Ooh. Ah. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Please boot up. Please boot up. Please boot up. <gasps> Yay! Okay, while well that is booting up and probably finding drivers, hopefully, I should totally do this one handed just to get it on camera. Because reasons. Because I know how exciting it is to unravel a network cable. I mean, so exciting. Totally just use my teeth. Okay, well, how do these go in? So like this, like this? I've never plugged one in. This is it, this is the first moment. <gasps> I think that's it. Just plug it in. So simple. God, I got cables everywhere. I need to make this thing look better. You know what? I need two hands. Oops. Perfect. Okay, I don't really like this. This thing is still booting up. And that was the whole time that I was starting or plugging in the cables. And this thing usually boots up pretty quick. So I don't know if, I wasn't paying attention to it. I don't know if it started up, detected the change in hardware, and then had a reset or something, or if it crashed it just like it crashed the server and took that down, I don't really know. But either way, it's booting up now. Still booting up, slowly. Like it's going really slow, and I have no idea why. Okay, installation was kind of weird. Um, First of all, it took forever for my computer to boot up originally. Then, I think it rebooted again. And then when it finally booted back up, not only did it go slow, but I lost internet connection on all of my, my network uh, cables. So, that was kind of weird. And I, I ended up having to reboot again because the 10 gigabit card was actually showing up underneath a different class of drivers. It was like a system connection driver or something and it said that my computer didn't have enough resources to activate it. So I reset it again and then all of a sudden it's working. So now we have, we have this and showing up as 10 gigabits per second. So that's good. So now I'm going to start the configuration process where I'm going to assign IP addresses to both of these computers um, within the properties and this should allow me to direct connect them uh, together so gonna do that basically what I had to do is go through and install both the network cards one on the server and one on my main PC once I got those installed I was able to go in there configure them to manually have an IP address for each one I made them 10.10.10.1 and 10.10.10.2 respectively and then I assign the host file to where whenever they are connecting back and forth, they go to that specified IP address used by the 10 gigabit network card. So that way they have their own dedicated highway to communicate with, out, with each other without bottling down or bottlenecking the rest of any of the network um, communication going on between that server and anything else. So this should ultimately solve my problem uh, solve two problems for me. One, slow connection speed between the main PC and my server that hosts all my files. And two, the bottleneck when communicating and doing file dumps, which I do quite a bit, 
Um, and that would, when I do a file dump, it pretty much just hinders the usage of the Plex Media Server completely, even on the lowest settings, um, just because it maxes it out and makes it unbearable. So now, once I got it installed, I did do uh, some buffer configurations, which I'm going to go through and play with some more. And I'm going to make sure that they are optimal settings, maybe change a few things, do some more tests. I did run an iPerf uh, test on both PCs and it was was coming out to I think a little like 8 or 9 gigabits a second. So it was definitely good speeds from that. So I might not even mess with that, honestly. Um, there is a certain limitation you know, to the speeds that I'll be using at the moment. I did try to install RAM disk on both PCs. Uh, as you can see on here, I did install the RAM disk. It's about 10 gig, uh, gigabytes worth of space. And because this computer only has uh, 16 gigabytes of, it, of memory. So I installed a 10 gigabyte a RAM disk drive on this and I was going to install it on my computer but I had an older version already installed then I tried to uninstall it then there was an error and then I tried to reinstall it and it, it was giving me another error so I basically just said screw it my operating drive is a Revo 350 so it's got pretty fast speeds already so what I did is I just did a copy test using RAM disk on one side which has a slow at well a normal speed SSD so I used RAM disk on one side and then my Revo drive on the other side, and I was able to get a solid, let's see, 1.1 gigabytes per second. I mean, look at that, that is beautiful. Just boom, fast, done, just like that. That is amazing. That is awesome. I mean, it's so fast, look at that. I mean, that's insane. 10 gigabit net networking is amazing. I don't have a need to run it all the way throughout my house because exactly like I said earlier, the only uh, needs I have is for that server, which is my Plex Media server, and connection from that to my main PC. So that's it. Those are the only two things that I need to have 10 gigabit connections. That's it for today, folks. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. It's less of a tutorial and more of a vlog, I think. Um, I'm not really going to walk you through step-by-step -step how to do it because there are other videos out there on how to do this step-by-step. Uh, -step. So all in all, I spent, I think, $30 or $24 or somewhere around there. Let's just say $30 on the two networking cards that I needed. And that was a bundle of two that got me one for this computer and one for the other computer. So that was pretty cheap. They're old, like refurbished. Um, they're old refurbished network cards that came out of old servers and they were originally probably three or $400, but now they're cheap because they're old and not used anymore. Then I spent on the SFP plus cable, I think, I think another 20 bucks or something. I don't know. I'll make sure to add that into the video when I edit it. But all in all, I mean, I spent probably less than 50 or 60 bucks on the whole thing. And that's going to give me a direct line of communication between my server and my main PC and ultimately keep any kind of bottlenecks from happening in the future, which is amazing. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. I will try to answer them to my fullest ability. Uh, this is a new thing for me. I just wanted to get this tested out and get the speeds that I was looking for and remove the bottlenecks that I had with my current setup. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at underscore bite my bits and have a good day.